Welcome to a new video to my home automation series. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, Wi-Fi signal strength uh, with the ESPs. Because I'm making all these videos with uh, various ESP boards like the VMOS D1 Mini or the Sonoff switches and we just have to realize how sensitive they are to the uh, to the Wi-Fi signal because uh, um, I'm not sure if you noticed or you know, but if I take the VMOS D1 Mini as an example, this uh, trace here on the top, that's basically the antenna. So, and it looks nice and it's really small, compact, but uh, uh, it would obviously have limitations because it's not going to be as powerful as like a normal antenna that you would find on your Wi-Fi router or your IP camera and even on your smartphone, which are, you know, highly engineered to, to perform uh, really well in... Uh, uh, on the Wi-Fi network. So for the test subject I have three devices. I have the standard VMOS D1 Mini. I have the v VMOS D1 Pro which is an ESP uh, with a small antenna. So it's an external antenna. And then we just have the Sonoff which has a similar design as the VMOS D1 but the whole antenna, the PCB antenna is on the main board. And probably you have seen it in my, in my previous videos. But again it's probably similar in size but it could be slightly different. And uh, I don't have any fancy uh, equipment to test the Wi-Fi and uh, I'm just going to use my smartphone and, the smart and a smartphone app to measure the, uh, the signal strength that the smartphone receives and we are going to compare that to the, to the ESP and then hopefully draw some conclusions or see some real world examples like how far you can go in a in a house and still have a reliable connection with the ESP. And I have to mention that I live in a brick and mortar house, so uh, like a wooden house uh, or anything like a structure uh, could perform a little bit better than uh, a brick and mortar house. For the testing I've downloaded the uh, an app which is called, uh, for Android it's called the Wi-Fi Analyzer, but probably there are similar apps available for uh, iOS as well. And um, so when it is connected to the Wi-Fi network, uh, I know I can change this graph to something else. I think it's the AP list. Yeah, so you can see the signal strength. So at the moment, uh, my home network, which is the top one, is measuring minus 47 dBm. And if you have seen my uh, ESP Easy videos, you know that I can make, I can configure the ESP easy so it also sends a signal level um, over MQTT every 5 seconds or 10 seconds or whatever and the, it, that's the exact same uh, uh, process I'm using here so all of these three sort of devices have a, um, a simple sketch which send out the, the RSI, RSSI uh, over MQTT and that's what I'm going to monitor here on the phone using another program which is called the MQTT dash uh, which just displays MQTT messages. So I have that, um, I have it to configure the, uh, the RSI, RSSI, the, oh, sorry, the RSSI signals coming from these three devices. So the VMOS Pro, the top one, the VMOS Mini and the Sonoff. So um, these values are not live at the moment because they are not plugged in. And uh, before we go and do the testing, let's uh, Let's look at what DBM and RSSI is and what's the difference between the two. Before we try to understand um, uh, the signal levels and then how signal levels is viewed on a, on a smartphone as a, uh, as a test device and, and the Sonoff, we just have to understand the difference between the RSSI and the, and the DBM. So when you look at a, an app on the phone, you would usually get the signal levels in DBM, which, as it says, is the physical rep, uh, physical number representing the power levels that the um, device receives. So that's the phone. But the RSSI is is just a, a receive single strength indicator. So that's just a number was the manufacturer come up with to represent how strong the the signal appears to be on the device. And then this uh, RSSI value can uh, uh, vary from uh, different manufacturers. Uh, because we are comparing yeah, different versions of the ESPs, the ESP chip itself and the manufacturer is the same. So we can safely assume that the same RSSI number on, uh, on, on the different ESP devices um, will represent the same 
let's say, level of uh, signal level uh, received by the ESP. The difference would be the like the antenna, whether it's a trace antenna, whether it's a, a real physical antenna, or the size of the trace antenna, or let's say just uh, probably even manufacturing, something like that. And when we talk about dBm, you can see like a chart here which says that it usually ranges from minus 30, which is like the let's say the the um, the best Wi-Fi signal level then to minus 70 uh, minus 90 which is which is basically uh, almost no signal at all and if you scroll through uh, this uh, uh, um, article again you can even have some <coughs> uh, examples here saying that how much you know a typical physical surface would reduce the the dBm the, uh, the dB level. So like say a drywall uh, drywall would be minus three dB, the brick wall would be minus six dB, or something which has substantial amount of metal could be minus nineteen dB. So we are already at the first place uh, for testing. I have all of the three devices. So the, the two VMOSs are um, connected to a power. Um, like a USB charger thingy with two outputs and then we have the Sonoff here and we are literally like three meters away from the router. If I look at the uh, the signal on the phone it says that um, I'm getting about minus 43 dBm and on the, on the VMOS we are getting like let's say 50 to 55 uh, RSSI as the signal strength and and this is the I think that's probably the best it can get uh, by the way these uh, these graphs are uh, so I set up these graphs so they show like full at minus 50 and then uh, basically nothing at minus 100 uh, and what is a little bit surprising that the v, uh, the Vmos Pro with the antenna is not showing uh, you know a, bet, a better reception than the other two Maybe the, uh, the, the direction of the antenna matters, so I'm just trying to move it around, but I don't see a great deal of uh, you know, change in the signal level. So, hopefully when we go uh, further away, the Vimos is going to perform better. Just a quick snapshot of my router, so it's like a box standard, uh, I think it's a ZTE or Huawei that I got from T-Home and it doesn't have any of these you know five antennas so I'm guessing it's a fairly standard model uh, when it comes to routers. Uh, one more thing before we go on is uh, this was something that was highlighted to me as well I mean I don't know too much about Wi-Fi signals and stuff but uh, all the ESP chips they only uh, communicate on the 2.5 2.4 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi band so not on the 5 gigahertz one uh, so if you have a 5 gigahertz uh, router that's not really going to help and then on uh, 2.4 gigahertz the routers are usually set to channel 1 or if they set automatically they usually go to channel 1 so if you download an application like this you can see how many devices you have on um, each channel so you you might want to pick a channel manually which sees the least traffic I mean it the this graph looks a little bit contradictory at the moment because I have my own Wi-Fi and um, TCOM has this thing that it creates a second Wi-Fi so other TCOM users can use my broadband and I can use other TCOM uh, uh, user broadband so this is why there is one Wi-Fi and another one and these ESP ones and the AR thinkers I think is something that the uh, uh, that the ESP chip is creating when it's uh, you know it's running its own firmware so you can just ignore that so at the moment I can see my Wi-Fi is on channel 11 quite strong and I can see something else on channel 5 and 6 so just have a look and then see uh, what the Wi-Fi traffic looks like in your area so the next room is my study which is basically one wall away from the uh, from the room where the router is so it's we are just behind the router so it's I guess it's one big brick wall or maybe there is actually two so on the phone the uh, the the signal thank you, a signal is down to what is it minus 58 D oops sorry 58 uh, dBm and if I go into the signal one the, the MQTT dash now we can see that the uh, the sonoffs are varying between 61 and 77 and the pro is at minus 77 
so the Pro is as bad as the as the Sonoff one. And um, uh, I'm trying to see if moving the standing the uh, the antenna up was, is going to make any change to the signal level, but it, it doesn't appear that way. I was hoping that I can use the Vmos Mini on a on a project outside, which is really struggling to get a, a decent signal from the router. But we'll see. And um, uh, what I somehow suspected is that the uh, the Vmos Mini, the standard Vmos Mini, performs a slightly bit better, maybe a slightly bit better than the Sonoff. It has physically just a little bit bigger uh, trace uh, for the Wi-Fi antenna. So I've moved outside, and. Uh, Let's hope the heat is not really uh, impacting the performance of this test because it's probably like 30 degrees outside. Um, and uh, just to look at my app, uh, the, the Wi-Fi is showing 59 dBm, so it's pretty much similar to the, uh, to the previous room we, we tested in. And we are actually, I would say, line of sight uh, with the router, probably about 8 to 10 meters away. and. Uh, uh, the only physical thing between two, uh, the router and the ESP is a patio door, which is a glass patio door. So, um, okay, so si let's say 60 dBm, minus 60 dBm, and the, uh, uh, the Sonoffs are showing minus 77, minus 80 RSSI. And again, the Pro is performing the poorest, which is a real surprise for me. I move further away from the house and I can see that my phone is able to connect so it sees it sees minus 81 dBm uh, um, from the from the Wi-Fi so it's pretty low again we I would say probably are about uh, 20 meters from the router but again it's mostly a patio door and maybe two trees so there is no you know hard brick wall between the two of us and uh, the RSSI is is pretty much nothing so okay I can see that the Vmos Mini managed to connect so it is seeing minus 85 83 dBm same as the Vmos so that you can see that they are sending updates uh, one second and uh, one second ago or zero seconds ago but the Sonoff update was two minutes ago so that's definitely out of reach uh, so as I suspected the the Sonoff would be the weakest of these three but still I can't really make the uh, the Vmos Pro to be any better than the standard Vmos that's a bit disappointing for me and the last place to test is uh, is our bedroom, which is on the second floor. So there is like one big concrete uh, ceiling between the uh, this place and the router, and then uh, yeah, probably some walls as well because it's not uh, directly beneath us. And again, looking at the phone, it's showing me a minus sixty eight um, dBm. So it's it's uh, it looks similar to the to the to the study as well. And if I look at the MQTT dashboard, I can see again signals between yeah 70 and 80. So one thing I can definitely tell is anything uh, when when your Sonoff is in the minus 90 RSSI ranges, then it's it's basically fighting with the noise level, and uh, that's also confirmed by one of the websites that I read. And I do have a. Um, a Sonoff which is, uh, well, it's actually, you can see it here as well, yes, yeah, this one, uh, it's like minus 69, and it is constantly rebooting. Um, it has a program which I have written, so probably that's not the best li best written program, uh, but as soon as I move the uh, move the Sonoff into a different place, uh, so it's not a Sonoff, it's a Vmos Mini, if I move it to a different place where there is better reception, then it just runs without any issues. So I'm guessing it's the uh, it's the communication where when if it gets stuck and it just waits and then the watchdog timer just reboots the uh, the device. So that was the one that I was hoping to uh, swap with the Vmos D1 Mini, but I just lost faith that it would be any better uh, reception than the than the you know than the standard Mini. So I'm not sure what I what I'm going to do with it. My takeaway from this experience is the following. 
if you are using a system where you can see the signal level on the device, for example, that's the Sonoff and the EV-Link application, just use that to see uh, if you are getting you know, decent signal at the place where you want to install your device. Um, if you are using something custom um, with a custom firmware, then try to uh, use the RSSI functionality of the um, ESP Wi-Fi library and then send that value over in, uh, let's say, every second or every yeah, couple of seconds over MQTT or any other method so you can use that device as a, uh, as a measurement tool to see the, uh, the received signal strength at, at the place where you want to install it. And if you want to do the kind of experience uh, experiment what I just did, then uh, first probably is the best is to set up some baseline values. So uh, use your phone uh, with the Wi-Fi analyzer app and a and the ESP um, and set it up in a location which is really close to the router, so the a place where there is no physical obstruction between the two devices. So for me, um, I had a minus 43 dBm and a minus 50 RSSI um, at that place. So that would be my baseline values. And again, I have a probably an average um, a phone, which is a, a Google Nexus 5X, and, and definitely an average router. And I don't have any of those fancy ones with you know five antennas and stuff. Um, and then start going around with your phone and then see how much um, dbm drop you experience on your phone and and these are the values that i have found so definitely any dbm drop usually um, um, means um, a more significant drop in rssi um, on the devices and uh, it's a little bit fewer on the vmos and it's a little bit more on the on the sonoff and I found that after you know 37 dBm drop on the phone, my VMOS was barely able to connect, and the Sonoff was uh, was not able to connect. So that was uh, permanently offline. And what I found from my experience is that anything between my, uh, below my, minus 90 or be, by less, uh, below minus 90 means that the Sonoff would just keep uh, sorry the ESP would just keep rebooting uh, because the uh, um, well, probably the watchdog timer or something which just times out because it takes so much time for that uh, for the communication between the ESP and the Wi-Fi signal again with better firmware this might not be the issue but uh, this, uh, this is something that I've experienced with a uh, with a simple custom um, Arduino firmware I hope I haven't made any obvious mistakes or wrong assumptions in this video if you think that I've, done, I've, I've said something wrong, just pe please feel free to go to the comment section and, and, and leave a note there. Otherwise, I hope you find this video useful and see you in the next episode.